Hey there, everybody. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Favorite Albums Through the Decades. This is the show that we're doing here on the channel throughout the month of May. I wasn't sure originally if we were going to be doing it every single day, but so far that's what we've done. So here's the show where we take a look at a band who was or has been around for quite a long time where they released albums in more than two decades, two distinct decades. So really we're looking at three, right? Three or more. And today we're going to take a look at one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Latin rock ensemble ever in the history of rock and roll, Santana, who got their start out of the San Francisco area in the late 60s, and they are still going strong today. So purpose of this video is to pick our favorite album release from each of the decades where they released albums i'm gonna do it could have some guests on some of these episodes we're gonna all do it together and you are gonna do it in the comments section so santana got their start in the 60s uh only one album released in the 60s so we're just gonna automatically put that one as the winner for the 60s the self-titled debut one of the great debuts of all time uh one of easily one of my favorite santana it's if it's not my favorite album of theirs it's probably number two it's a definitely a top three album for them. I mean, you know, you got Waiting, Evil Ways, uh, Savor, Jingo, Persuasion, Soul Sacrifice, You Just Don't Care. Top to bottom, a great album, not a very long album, but I uh, got the great Greg Raleigh alongside Carlos Santana on uh, Hammond, Oregon, and lead vocals. Just a fantastic, fantastic, iconic album, I would say. All right, now we're going to go to the 70s. Uh, I'm going to go to their third album, which is either just Again, just called Santana, but we mostly call that Santana 3, right? Uh, that is this classic album here. Of course, this is where you've got a very young, very young Neil Sean joining the ranks of the band. Neil, of course, uh, would, with Greg Raleigh, jump ship not long afterwards to form a band called Journey, right? But this is a fiery, fiery album. Uh, the first three albums are really can't miss, in my opinion. The first four albums, actually, too, but the fourth album is quite different. But this is a winner as well. Uh, you got the great No One to Depend On, Fiery Rock track. You got Batuca, Taboo, Guajira, Vamanos, Guajira, Jungle Strut, Everything's Coming Our Way, good kind of funky R&B type song. And you've got uh, Twissant Le Overture, right? Great track, made even better on some of the uh, some of the live versions you've heard. You'll hear later on in the decade from the band, um, especially on that great Lotus live album, right? Uh, Papa Los Romberos, you know, Jungle Strut, Everybody's Everything, really good, pretty rocking album, but again has a lot of those kind of Latin flavors on it, which I absolutely love. So that's my pick from the '70s. So let's move into the 80s, right? The 80s, I think, for me, was the toughest decade because they the band pumped out a lot of albums in the 80s. A uh, few of them really strong, some of them not so much, but uh, a couple choices here, and uh, it came down to three, and then I kind of went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Ultimately, I went with uh, 1985's Beyond Appearances. Uh, you know, the, the, the Santana band, a little bit different in the 70s, in the 80s compared to the 70s. You know, early in the 70s, they had that whole kind of Latin jazz rock thing going on, a lot of psychedelia in the music, and then they kind of moved into a little more ethereal type music, very fusion oriented, right? And then started to get into a lot of real kind of uh, like. Spanish themes, you know, both, uh, you know, from Mexico and Puerto Rican and the rest of the Caribbean, right? And then in the 80s, taking on a little more of a pop rock flavor. Uh, but I think Beyond Appearances might perhaps be the strongest of those handful of albums from this decade. You know, breaking out, good catchy songs on here, good rock songs. Still got all the percussion going on. And, of course, the great guitar work. But, you know, here you've got a lot more vocal pieces written in sand. Gorgeous song. Brotherhood, uh, Who Loves You is great. I'm the One Who Loves You. Say It Again, good catchy poppy song. Uh, Touchdown Raiders, killer. I don't know. I just think this is really good, accessible Santana with all those kind of flavors you still like, but very memorable songs. Just a good kind of pop rock album, mid-80s album that I think uh, still holds up really well today. Uh, you know, the 90s, a little bit of a challenge, too. Came down to a couple albums uh, for me, but I ultimately went with, by a hair, I went with Milagro from 1992. I remember buying this uh, when it first came out and, you know, liking it quite a bit. Got Chester Thompson on this album, right? Uh, 
mainstay in the band right around this time. Uh, Somewhere in Heaven, really, really cool song, very emotional. Uh, Life is for the Living, another really good one. Uh, Aqua Gaff. Aqua que Vasier is really good. Make somebody happy. Make somebody happy. Good R&B flavors in some of these songs. Again, they kind of carry that over from uh, the late 70s and the 80s. Uh, what else? Uh, Gypsy. We Don't Have to Wait. Adios. Free All the People. South Africa. A lot of South African themes and a couple of albums in a row from Carlos right around this time. So I like Milagro. Good stuff. Good stuff. A lot of content on that one. Uh, as a lot of CDs in the early 90s, uh, you know, they would be pushing the boundaries of 70 minutes on most of them. Uh, the early 2000s, not a lot to choose from. I decided to go with uh, Shaman from 2002, which, you know, is the big follow up to the one that came before it, which was a huge album for Santana and got them back on the map. And so here in this point in time, Carlos and company released I think, was it three or four albums where Carlos brought in a lot of different guest stars, musicians and singers. Uh, so it almost became like the Santana All-Star Project, right? So it's like, you know, all the, a lot of female and male singers and different musicians and things like that to try and bring some new elements to the band. And, you know, for the most part, it worked. All right, for the most part, it worked. Uh, here we've got, uh, you know, Nothing at All. We've got uh, The Game of Love was the big hit on here, of course, featuring uh, Michelle Branch. Um, what else? Uh, you Are My Kind featuring Seal. Uh, Amore, Victory is, is uh, One. Feels Like Fire. Why Don't You and I, Since Supernatural. Supernatural, of course, is the album that came before it. America, One of These Days. A lot of songs on here. Uh, I don't, you know what? This is like almost wins by default because the uh, the band really didn't release a lot in this uh, in the ten years here, uh, and um, I'm not as big a fan of these all star collaboration albums from them. There's good stuff on there for sure. So this one gets the win for me, even though it's I don't really listen to it a lot. But I think compared to the I think there was one other release in that decade which I'm not big on. So that that almost wins by default. And then in the 2010s, here it gets a little more interesting because you've got I think five albums that have come out. Uh, since 2010. Three of them are actually really good. The other two I'm not really into at all. Um, and then it came down to two, but I ultimately went with uh, Santana 4 from 2016 because this is basically the reunion album of uh, a lot of the original guys from the classic lineup, you know, the, the early 70s lineup. And uh, I like this a lot. I like this a lot. I saw them on this tour. It was kick-ass. So, of course, you know, you got a lot of the usual suspects on here. Michael Shreve and Neil Sean and Greg Raleigh and a bunch of other dudes. Uh, this is quite good. Pretty fiery stuff. Um, I almost wish they would do it again, but this may have been kind of like a one-and-done one and type of thing. So there you have it from the 2010s, Santana 4, from the 2000s, Shaman, from the 1990s, Milagro, from 92, from the 80s, 85, Beyond Appearances. From the 70s, we're going to go Santana 3 from 1971. And the Lone album from 1969, perhaps their greatest ever uh, self-titled Santana from 1969. So there you have it. Today is Santana Day here on the channel. There is your uh, favorite albums through the decade. So, of course, in the comments below, I'd like everybody to pick your favorite Santana from all these different def decades, all these different decades. And I don't think we want to defecate on the show. Decades is what we're shooting for. So uh, there you have it, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. We'll have uh, hopefully another one of these coming up tomorrow. We've also got Martin Popoff back on the show tomorrow. For Friday at the Fun House with Pardo and Popoff tomorrow, we're actually in the Fun House. We're going to be doing a Ranking the Album show, uh, sort of. We're going to be giving you our top favorite. We're going to rank our five favorite albums from a great U.S. band that had a lot of albums. We decided just to concentrate on our top five. Little Feet. All right, so that's coming up tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for that. Tonight, though, you've got uh, Rich Catino, Chris Allo, and me, the Monster's Den, it's all about uh, some film recommendations that we've watched in recent weeks that you guys should check out. I've got a nice little stack here, I know the guys do as well. So that's coming up tonight, and uh, we've also got uh, this weekend, we've got Ranking the Albums of Bruce Dickinson's Solo, of course the famous 
lead singer of Iron Maiden. He's got a handful of really cool solo albums. We're going to rank those. That's myself, Rich Catino, and Chris Allo. And uh, we've got Jack Toledano is going to join me for a top ten songs of Metal Church. And then we've got the ultimate classic rock mixtape challenge where myself, Jack Toledano, Sidney Taylor, Craig Seibert will be trying to put together the ultimate classic rock mixtape for someone who's never listened to classic rock before. And judging the four of us will be none other than Martin Popoff. So that's happening this weekend as well. So all sorts of good stuff coming up. Then we got, of course, Monday is the Hudson Valley Squares, Tuesday in the Prague seat. Then it all starts all over again. Wednesday is, of course, What's Hot with Sea Tranquility Day. We're really trying very hard to make every day of the week have very specific programming. So Monday, Hudson Valley Squares. Tuesday in the proxy. Wednesday, What's Hot with Sea Tranquility. Thursday, the Monsters Den. And Friday, Friday morning at the Fun House or Friday morning Fun House, whatever, Friday Fun House. Fun, fun House in the Fridays, Friday in the Fun House, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's basically Martin Popoff and myself every Friday morning, whatever we decide to call that show. Um, but we do a different topic every week. So that's that's kind of like your Monday through Friday programming. Of course, we do other stuff that we interject, like the favorite albums, you know, favorite albums through the decades or, you know, rants and all sorts of that stuff that kind of like kind of plops in, in between everything. And then we'll try to keep the uh, Sunday brunch going as well that's usually with rich catino and myself and frequently other people as well and that's uh, usually a a ranking show ranking the album show or something like that so uh a lot of stuff obviously so stay tuned for that and more make sure you subscribe if you haven't already click that uh, notification bell so you get notified of all of our uh, content that posts on the channel if you want to make a donation the link to the ko-fi page is below and if you want to get one of the many shirts we've got man we got should we have like six i think six different maybe there's more actually i think there might be seven different sea tranquility shirts and hoodies and coffee mugs and things like that and hats and all that good stuff and then uh, we also have a shirt for the Monsters Den. We have a shirt for the Hudson Valley Squares. We now also have a shirt for my other channel, Comic Book Geezers. If you haven't checked out Comic Book Geezers, if you love Silver and Bronze Age comics, stuff from the 60s, 70s, and early 80s, my co-host and I, Wild Bill, and my other co-host, uh, Kirk, that's all we talk about in the show. We show all comic books, talk about all comic books, open them up. Uh, it's all about old comic books, because as you can see, by up there, I have a, quite a lot of them, as do my, my buddies. So uh, that's a show all about comics, so head over there and subscribe if you haven't already, if you have any interest in comics at all. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the shows are pretty funny and witty, and uh, it's just a bunch of old guys talking about comic books kind of like we do here talking about music so if you like what we see what you see here we do the same thing on comic book users except talking about something a little different so anyway thanks for watching everybody we'll see you later on tonight for the monsters den take care bye, -bye.